One does not simply walk into Mordor. The land of shadow. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, in today's Shadowcast, we are featuring a breakdown of the first episode, A Shadow of the Past, from The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Uh, I have to say I like the callback to The Lord of the Rings with that title. I think that's a great way to start. Um, before I begin, though, there are a few things I'd like to share about the but the impressions that I have so far of the show. Um, I have now watched it, uh, each of the two episodes, three times each, and with each viewing, I start to like it better. Um, I think this is gonna be a successful series. Uh, it may not be perfect, but um, I think overall, this is gonna be an exciting series to watch. Am I happy with the ways that they have broken from canon? Absolutely not. And there are issues that I have with the story um, and some of the characters. Um, however, that is not gonna stop me from enjoying watching this series uh, from beginning to end. I'm, I've decided to go into it with a positive thought about it and really hope for the best. I really won't be able to evaluate it 100% until we get to the end. But so far, I really like what I see. Um, one of the things that I think is important to point out is that the Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit were narrative stories. However, this series is really not based on a narrative at all. Uh, it really is based on historical reference and a list of dates that you see in the appendices of the Lord of the Rings, which legally is all they really are supposed to be using for, to create these stories for this series. Um, even, but even if it were the Silmarillion, uh, the Silmarillion reads like a lyrical history. It doesn't read like the Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit, which are narrative stories. So the writers of this series have had to create a story. That means likely creating new characters and situations that uh, we are unfamiliar with uh, and that we'll have to evaluate as we go in terms of whether it really fits into uh, the lore of Tolkien and, and the uh, essence of what he portrayed in his works, in all of his written works. Anyway, that is how I am choosing to evaluate this new series, uh, is to not so much whether it sticks to canon uh, exactly in all of its uh, story and character, but whether it has and holds the essence of Tolkien. So that's all I'm going to say about that at this point. Now let's dive in for all the dark things we saw in the first episode of Shadow of the in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. Let's begin this shadow cast with the opening scene set in the First Age. A young Galadriel suffers the mean behavior of her friends who sink her paper boat. Her older brother Finrod comes to her defense. He tells her why a rock sinks and a ship floats. The rock sinks because it looks down into the darkness, while the ship floats because it gazes up at the light in the sky. Galadriel tells him there is light reflected on the water as well as light in the sky. She asks him how to choose, and he whispers the answer in her ear, which is not revealed until the end of the episode. This and its final reveal at the end is a pivotal scene that I think sets the stage for the entire series and the struggle that Galadriel goes through. After this scene, we see the destruction of the two trees of Valinor. Lorelin, the gold tree, 
and Telprion, the silver tree. I thought this was beautifully done, and the addition of Morgoth's shadow rising up behind the trees was a nice touch. It reminded me of the ending of The Lord of the Rings. In the books, when the spirit of Sauron rises in the sky as seen in this image by Ted Nasmith. The realm of Sauron is ended, said Gandalf. The ring bearer has fulfilled his quest. And as the captains gazed south to the land of Mordor, it seemed to them that black against the pall of cloud, there rose a huge shape of shadow, impenetrable, lightning crowned, filling all the sky. Enormous it reared above the world and stretched out towards them a vast, threatening hand, terrible but impotent. Even as it leaned over them, a great wind took it, and it was all blown away and passed, and then a hush fell. Ah, the words of Tolkien are always so beautiful. Uh, after this, we see the maps of Tolkien's world which I absolutely love. Tolkien and maps just seem to go together. We see the elves sailing to Middle-earth, waging war on Morgoth. And there are two quick things I want to point out. As the camera pans over the sea, we see two things. First, the sea serpent or fish dragon. I hope we get to see this in the series. Secondly, I see what looks like a watcher in the water. Let's hope so. Finally, we land in Middle Earth, and we see in full the battle from the trailers. A great scene of a dragon killing one of the great eagles, which goes a long way to explaining why the eagles helped out in the Third Age. We see Finrod fighting for his life as we know he would. Then we see orcs doing terrible things. Finally, we get our first look at Sauron, surrounded by orcs who flock to him after the fall of Morgoth. It's a great shot, and he is seen wielding a massive spear. Love this. Then we cut to the image we have seen before of Galadriel on Finrod's deathbed, and we see a close-up of the mysterious symbol carved into his flesh. Now, I have heard rumors that this might be a directional symbol for Mordor. The more I think about it, the more I believe this might be true. As you can see here, the map of Mordor overlaid over the symbol, you can kind of see they have a very similar shape, but we'll just have to wait and see. Next, on our dark circuit of the first episode, Galadriel discovers the evil fortress. Could this be Angband? Canon states that Angband was utterly destroyed during the War of Wrath and the destruction of Belarand. But it looks like it might be, or possibly could be, if they don't stick to canon. We can't say for sure at this point, but it is a good possibility. Galadriel discovers a hidden dungeon, a torture chamber. We see the entire scene of them finding and discovering Sauron's symbol, which Galadriel believes is pointing the way to his abode. But she does say they must go further north, which is the way the direction must be pointing. However, that then pokes a hole in my theory uh, that we have heard rumors of that it might possibly be a symbol for Mordor. We'll just have to wait and see. She talks about a dark sorcery that accesses the unseen world. This sounds really interesting. Uh, a foreshadowing, perhaps, of the dark sorcery used by Sauron in the Rings of Power. I love this whole scene. It really sets the mood of the evil that we're going to be seeing in this series. Next, we see the Battle of the Snow Troll. We get to see him in full during this sequence. I like the design by John Howe, though I still think the horns around his mouth are a bit strange. That's going to take some getting used to. 
He doesn't seem quite as frightening as I'd hoped, but I like the scene. The sword lift fits right in with the elven antics of Legolas. We move on to the first appearance of a warg. Among the Harfoots, we see the symbol of wargs first. Then, Nori Brandyfoot, a took at heart, leads an adventure to an abandoned farm to raid the garden for blackberries. One of the children sees a warg track in the mud. They get away just in time, before the warg has a chance of snacking on hobbit pie. I will have to see more of these creatures before making up my mind if I like the way the wargs look in this series. We now move on to the Southlands, which appear to be further east of Mordor rather than in it as we first thought. We learn the elves are leaving, and the leader of the elves tells Arondir that the, that the men they have been guarding are evil and they should be glad to be rid of them. Arondir says nothing to this, but rushes off to Bronwyn to profess his love. They discover a sick cow with milk gone bad after it strays into another village. Arondir and Bronwyn go to seek it out, and they find the village burning and deserted. I think the orcs who attacked the village were hungry. If you look here, I wonder if this mountain range on the left are the Ash Mountains. Maybe. Now we pick up the story of the evil sword. Theo, son of Bronwyn, leads another boy to the barn of Waldredge, where under the floorboards he pulls out the broken sword. The other boy cuts his finger on the blade and then runs away when they hear someone coming. Theo holds up the blade and we see Sauron's symbol, which erupts in a fiery vision, much like the one that Galadriel sees when she uncovers the symbol in the stone. Then we come to Galadriel's crossing into the Blessed Realm, which closes out the first episode. On the ship, the armor is removed from Galadriel and the other elves. She struggles to let go of Finrod's knife. She keeps looking back into the darkness as the others seek out the light. Finally, we hear Finrod's words whispered into the ear of Galadriel as a child when she asks, How am I to know which light to follow? Sometimes we cannot know until we touch the darkness. With these words, we now know what Finrod whispered to Galadriel, and it is a key moment in the show and really in the whole length of the show. This scene is cut with images of the falling meteor rushing over Middle-earth and the scene of Gilgalad picking up the yellow malarn leaf, which becomes infected with a black fungus. Galadriel is finally seen jumping into the sea, holding Finrod's knife as the way into Valinor closes. This whole sequence, built together with all these elements and scenes, and Galadriel's story about Seeking the Darkness, I think, sets the tone for the whole series to come and all the terrible things that are about to happen in Middle-earth. Uh, the show ends with the Harfoots discovering the stranger in a ring of fire. I have to say, this visual image leads me strongly in the direction that this may well be Sauron. I can't wait to see more. Hey everybody, that should wrap it up for today. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, this breakdown of the first episode of The Rings of Power. Um, I should be getting the next one out within uh, the next day or so because I want to get it to you guys before the premiere of episode three. Um, so it should be coming soon. Um, and so until next time, where I hope to see you in one of the dungeons of the dark Lord Sauron.